Last year, I got this Cobra Mustang delivered to my shop. Here she is, only 17,000 miles, a gigantic supercharger, and it was only 8,500 bucks. I mean, look at the body. This thing is sweet. Now, back in the early 2000s, this thing was kind of a big deal as it was the fastest 1999 Cobra in the world with about 800 horsepower. And now, well, now it's it's not, it, it doesn't run. Now I haven't yet figured out exactly what happened, but someone blew this engine as it's very locked up and then it was left to sit for 20 years. And I'm not proud of it, but I've also let this Cobra just sit out here with a blown engine and who knows how many other issues. But those days are over as I have a supposedly good used Cobra engine that I only paid $3,500 for it and I was told that it has forged internal. So let's dig into this new engine, see if I got a good deal or totally ripped off. And then we have to remove the old engine and discover what in the world happened to it 20 years ago. Now, first things first, I wanna look inside the new engine because I wasn't able to personally inspect it, which I don't recommend doing, but if this is what they say it is, this was a phenomenal deal, fingers crossed. Now, I was told this 4.6 liter dual overhead cam V8 engine had only 10,000 miles since its build, and it was built for boost. Please be good, please be good, please be good. Let's hope there are markings on the pistons and the cylinders look good. We have a piston that's almost at top dead center. It looks good but we need to see the walls. It spins. Yes, it has compression. Whew. After looking inside every cylinder, I was happy with the condition, but we'll need to remove the oil pan a little later in the video to see if we have forged internals since I can't tell from the tops of the pistons. I like it. I think we're good. Ford guys, let me know in the comments if you think these are aftermarket and do you guys think the amount of carbon indicates 10,000 miles? I'm not convinced yet, but either way, let's get the Cobra in and take out the blown engine to see what happens. Get this guy into neutral. Let's do this. Now the hardest part of this whole project will be getting the Cobra into the shop. We got a little bit of an uphill. Yeah, Max is burning out. We need better feet traction. Oh, we got it. We're almost in the warmth. Oh, and we're gonna hit the TA. I put the TA underneath the lightning since we're gonna be working right there just to give us some early 2000s motivation. This is a cool sight to see right here. Cobra's in the shop. Let's get this engine out. So the game plan here is disconnect everything that needs to be disconnected so we can drop this engine out the bottom. That's right, we're using the yellow engine table again. I'm so excited. So right now I have a couple of fuel lines that we're going to remove from the fuel rail. There's one and there's two. Look at the crust. Ooh, I'll put these over to the side. And here's the aftermarket fuel pressure regulator. And this sensor is for the gauge in the car. Since we're going out the bottom, I need to disconnect all of the air intake tubes. And hopefully there's not a dead rodent in here. Or if there is, hopefully he's nice and doesn't have rabies. Oh, come on. Whew. Oh, there we go. Anything? No, look at this guy still spins. I mean, she looks crusty for sure, but there's no shaft play. All right. I have no idea what's going on with this. Let's get this valve car out of the way. Oh, there we go. What do we got going on here? I don't know. We'll just, yeah. Now we have to drain all the coolant and it's already looking pretty good. It's green. That's a good sign. Woo! Oh. <laughs> coolant tastes good, but don't don't swallow it. It'll, it'll kill you. Look at that nice green coolant. Awesome, thank you previous owner for not putting like deck school in, that'd be nasty. Now I need to disconnect the AC lines. There is no refrigerant left at all. Okay, whew. So similar to fuel lines, this requires a little plastic tool that pushes on a spring in here, releases it, and out she comes. Look at this, Ford uses three O-rings to seal the AC line. That's almost as many threads as they use for spark plug holes. Ask me how I know. Not gonna lie, I don't remember if I drained the oil in the previous videos on this. Ooh, that doesn't look like oil at all. Ugh. Yeah. I think that's a little bit of, uh, I don't know what that is, guys. I think it's straight up water. It smells horrible. It's vomiting right now. This is Cobra vomit. That's what it is, ew. I'm gonna remove the supercharger separately, so we need to disconnect some oil lines. Here is the drain, and here's our feed line. A Little bit of oil left. I have made quite the mess here on the floor, and I just, I just can't work like this. 
This Release All Surface Cleaner is so good. Look at this, guys. It's perfect. You can clean up pretty much anything like baked on bugs on the front bumper of your car, exhaust, soot, grease, brake dust, you name it. Let me show you. The pumper is the best, but for smaller jobs, they have a spray bottle and look what it does to the exhaust soot on the Corvette. Gone. And it's super safe on all surfaces. And look at just how quickly it works. Bam. So we went from this all the way to this in about 15 seconds. This truly is an all surface cleaner. So you can use it on aluminum, on glass, plastic, and much more. Mint. And guys, Release is one of the best car interior cleaners on the market because it's effective yet gentle and there are no fragrances or dyes. Release is four to six times more concentrated than other concentrated cleaners. Look what it does to the brake dust on the inner barrel of my Porsche wheel. Are you kidding? I love this stuff. Oh, and Release is safe on cars that are ceramic coated and it's made in the USA. And look at this, it meets Boeing, Douglas, and AMS specifications for airplane cleaning. You can use this on boats, cars, trucks, bus cleaning, pretty much everything. And they don't use any phosphates or harmful chemicals. And one of these spray bottles is only $17, but by far the sweetest deal is to buy the one gallon of concentrate because with this one gallon, you can fill this 80 times for just about over a dollar per refill. And the best part is if you guys click on my link in the description box and use coupon code LEGIT, you're gonna get 10% off your order. And there's free shipping to the lower 48 states in the US if you spend over $75. So take advantage of the deal. You guys are going to love this stuff. It is legit street cars approved. The Cobra has some serious headers. Look at how big this is. Super long primaries. And one of them runs on the outside of the Cayman it's pretty neat. Right now I need to disconnect these sweet headers. Oh, did that not break? Yes. All the bolts came out. No problem. Didn't break anything. Last one. Oh, oh yeah. Animals have been living in here. This X pipe was, was a home. Not anymore. This was prime rodent real estate right here. There's some acorns. So I'm assuming maybe chipmunks. I mean, squirrels. I don't know if this is too small for a squirrel, but Pretty nice home nonetheless. Look inside the header, man, they were living it up. The driver's side chipmunks were much cleaner. They probably didn't take kindly to the chipmunks on the west side of the transmission. I think it's best we remove the entire exhaust. Nice blue bushings. Are these sway bar link bushings? Ah, what in the world? Is this for a battery terminal? I don't know, but this is really neat. Okay, stay. Okay. Uh, right. Woo! Good thing I had my Wheaties today. Get out of here, rodent home. Oh. <laughs> no way. Look at all that. Wow. This was in the exhaust. There's probably way more too. I said, this is the most stuff I've ever found in an exhaust. Pretty cool. These drive shaft bolts are totally frozen. Get out. Oh, I spoke too soon on, on the hardware coming apart on this car. Don't ever speak too soon. S speak too late? I don't know. Here's my frozen bolt removal kit. Fire, license plate, mask. Let's do this. Old license plates are the best for this. We want to protect the pinion seal, so we'll stick it in there. Fire it up. You want to heat up where the threads are, not the head of the bolt. Right in here. Oh my gosh. This blew literally into my mask. That's what I wanted to do. Let's see what you got now, bolt. Yeah, you got nothing. Ah. Got nothing. All right, so now we just... Gently remove the bolt. Yay. Last bolt. There we go. Drive shaft coming out. Are we gonna lose anything? There we go. Nope. Didn't lose any fluid. Very, very light drive shaft. I mean, super ridiculously heavy, but light for me because of my buys. Hey, look at this cool little differential bump stop. It's like a trailer hitch, but a, but a bump stop. Oh, and in case you guys are wondering, yes, this is a real Cobra. And yes, in 1999, Cobras had independent rear suspension, but this was swapped out for the solid axle as that's typically better for drag racing. The axles are much stronger. So yeah, they went race car with that. 
And if you guys were around a few videos ago, then you know that I replaced the entire fuel tank. It had a little rust hole and the fuel system, as you could imagine, is pretty robust and pretty old school. They use a gigantic inline pump. I put a new filter in there and this does work. So our fuel system outside of the injectors is definitely intact. And correct me if I'm wrong, but in 1999, did they just use a normal Mustang bumper? Because it doesn't say Cobra, it doesn't look really like anything special, but I think that's just how the 99s were. Look at that early 2000s rubber. They just, they don't make burnout rubber like they used to. Someone said that at some point, right? All right, it's removed the blower time. Getting so lucky with these bolts. Hallelujah. Since we have to swap the trans over to the new engine, it's a good idea to drain the fluid. We want to do a service on it anyway. Let's see. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. So nice. I kind of feel bad now that I'm wasting all this transmission fluid, but you know, not that bad. We need to maintain our Cobra. So I think we have everything disconnected around the engine. We're just going to pull this blower out now. It's just resting on a stud. Oh, that thing is mangled. Yes. Oh, wow. Look at what happened to the bearing in there. This thing is smoked. Ooh, hey, it's got a part number on it. That's great. I'll get a new one. But yeah, this thing is looking good. Spins freely, no play whatsoever. I think we have a good blower. That's great news. These are really expensive. What kind of pulley do we have here? Maybe we can go smaller. More boost? I've never owned a car with a Vortec supercharger and I'm not sure if the newer models have changed, but this is very unique in the world of supercharging. The fact that we are feeding engine oil into the supercharger to lubricate it and then it has the return back to the oil pan. That basically resembles almost every single turbocharger. So this is the new hybrid turbocharger for my Eclipse and it has an oil feed and an oil return. Most superchargers that sit right on top of the engine have the oil right in the snout here. That's where you fill it and it's self-contained and you change it maybe every year or two. But the Pro Charger on the C4 is the most apples to apples comparison. This is a belt driven centrifugal supercharger just like the Vortec, but this has self-contained oiling. So you pop this out, fill it with oil and you're good to go for a very long time. This is much, much easier. You don't have to plumb lines to the engine oil system or anything like that. I definitely prefer this. But I really wanna keep the Cobra the way it was when it was the fastest Cobra in the world. So we're gonna go with the old school Vortec. We're keeping this thing on there. This is all that remains of the belt. There was no belt on this car at all. Next up, I removed the steering shaft, which required a hammer. The wiring harness was disconnected, a shifter cable and both trans cooler lines. This thing has the longest wheel studs ever. We have some force line racing wheels. Oh, and some really nice thick spacers. And look at the Cobra brakes. I think these are just regular brakes that just say Cobra on them. I don't know. They don't look that special. And look at these 20 something year old tires. They're still holding air. It's amazing. Now, when it comes to dropping an engine with the subframe, you have two options with the brakes. You can either remove the hard metal line from the caliper and let the fluid drip all over the place, or you can just remove the caliper. Now I choose to remove the caliper or at least in theory, I want to remove the caliper. Well, this is on there. There we go. All right, and the reason I removed the caliper is so we don't get the fluid everywhere. And also if we leak out all of the fluid, air is going to enter the system and it's a pain in the butt to bleed versus just doing a flush. So here's our Cobra caliper. And you don't want this thing just hanging around. Bungee cord it to something. Just make sure whatever you bungee it to isn't attached to the engine you're about to remove. And look at this oil filter. It's all rusty. You need better paint on there, Motorcraft. I don't recommend you do this, but you guys wanna see something cool? We can clean things up in short order. Oh, we got a fire. Out. With the map gas torch. And then it smells like a campfire. It's like going camping while working on your car, but don't do it at home. It's, it's really dumb. Don't light things on fire. Woo. All right. So luckily this spring was super loose. So we just dropped the strut and we are one step closer, people. One step closer to this engine coming out. It's engine table time. It's engine table time. This thing's coming out. 
Ooh, man, did I get that right on. I pumped this up exactly where it needed to be. I'm like an engine table pro. Now I got lucky that the transmission cross member bolts came out without an issue and most of the engine subframe bolts came out pretty easily as well. But again, don't ever celebrate too early. Last one, last one. I don't know why I speak too soon on this stuff. This is ridiculous. This one's not working out. You know what time it is? Oh man. Okay, all right, you know what? I don't wanna burn down my Cobra. Let's clean up some stuff. Although it smells so good, guys. It's, it's camping, I love camping. No fire? No fire. Now let's see how tough you are. Really tough. Really tough, it's continuing to spin, great. It is actually best to get a wrench onto these, I got lucky on the other ones. Then you just use your hand in between the spring, you know, to protect the wrench. This hurts. Ah, okay, there we go. All right, I saw how to do it. Yes. It's all about the fire. That was it, that was the last piece of the puzzle. Famous last words. Okay, no biggie. I was just that making noises and scaring me. Okay. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that was a little scary. I made a walk around. The steering shaft was kind of getting in the way even though I had it unbolted, but let's keep going here. Sounding good, no crunchy stuff. Oh, that's nothing. Just the steering shaft. I removed it from inside the car. All right, looking good. A couple hoses hanging up, no biggie. I had to get up using a ladder because I forgot something. This doesn't have a vacuum brake booster. It has a hydro booster with power steering lines going to it and they were still connected to the rack. So it's easier to disconnect them from up here. And here's the view from up here with the engine partially out, but I'm not in the best position to be doing this. I'm uh, pretty much breaking my back right now, but it's worth it. It's a Cobra. Here's where we're at on the passenger side and the driver's side. These headers are awesome. I love stuff like this, date codes. This is so cool. Coming down. Oh. <laughs> it just never gets old, guys, taking engines out. I love it, I love it. Are we all the way down? I think so. Get out, you blown up engine from 20 years ago. What was wrong with you? We're gonna find out, let's just Let's rip it apart. Now I suspect we're gonna find some pretty sweet piston to valve damage. So the goal is to remove the cylinder heads and we'll see if we find any carnage in the bottom end because we have to remove the oil pan for the return oil fitting. There's not a whole lot I need off this old engine except for the coolant pipe and the injectors. The coolant pipe was rusted in but after about 20 minutes of fighting it, it finally came out. Ah, I got one. What in the world is this? There's a washer in here. I got nothing, people. I got nothing. There's a washer inside of that coolant port. Now you know what we had to do to get this pipe out. Yep, the fire. Woo. Oh, it's coming. She's loose. Ah, I did it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, I think we can still use this too. That's great. No washer though. Next up, the front drive accessories need to come off in order for us to remove the front timing cover. And I'm not going to reuse any of these as the ones on the new engine look much better. First up was the water pump pulley and it came off pretty easily. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I messed up guys. Oh yeah, the front cover on the new engine is totally different. This is from a 2001 Cobra and this is a 99 Cobra engine. You can see the tensioner in this pulley and the water pump pulley are the differences. And this part right here kind of sticks out in the 01 cover. So Ford guys, let me know what's going on here. Hopefully I can just swap the covers and call it a day. Now, luckily for me, stripping the front cover ended up being pretty easy as none of the accessories gave me any fuss, including the harmonic balancer, which looked like it was gonna be frozen on the engine, but with a puller, it came right off. Ooh, that was easy. All right. With the accessories all off, I unbolted the header. It didn't break anything. And this is crazy. I've never owned a car with headers like this. Each individual runner comes out of the collector. I mean, this is some serious race car stuff going on, especially when there's an acorn in the primary. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put these back before I forget how this goes, which I already did. 
it, maybe it goes like that. Let's see what we have under this valve cover. Here we go, here we go. I'm gonna find anything cool in here. At uh, first glance, everything looks good. I uh, don't see any carnage here. All right, there's carnage somewhere. Let's get the front cover off. Our power steering reservoir bracket coming off. The last front timing bolt has to be aftermarket. It's an Allen. That can't be Ford, right? There we go. I don't know about you guys, but I love taking apart carnage engine. Is there any carnage in here? No, well, that looks beautiful. Nothing yet. Wow. Nice gasket, Ford. This is thick. I like it. Anything, anything, anything. No, this looks perfect, guys. Huh. I wasn't really suspecting anything wrong with the timing chain, but I don't know. You never know. If I can get to these bolt heads by moving all the leaves out of the way, we can remove this intake manifold. Sometimes it's good to make sure that your socket is square on the bolt. That way you don't strip it out. Bolts are all out. She's <laughs> loose and she is dirty. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, that's, that's gross. Okay. Is that human hair? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Whoa, are we gonna find a dead body? Did we already find a dead body? What in the world? Ew, guys. Nothing alive. Still some decent acorns in here. Wow, look at how deep it goes. This is crazy. Is this worse than the valley on the DeLorean? I don't know. Actually, no, look at this pipe in here is beautiful. The DeLorean had a similar metal pipe under the intake and it was all rusted up. Wow, this stayed dry. All right, I'll take it. This we can vacuum up. We got human hair, we got good acorns, we got a few dead bugs, lots of dirt. It's organic, it's organic. You can definitely tell these heads were ported and polished. They have an M stamped into them. These valves are rusted. Let's see if we can find any broken valves or leaves on them. So far, so good outside of the rust. Here's the passenger side. Where are the broken valves? This is crazy. Let's loosen up the timing chain tensioner. There we go. And we have one on the driver's side as well. And I believe this aluminum guide is an upgrade over the factory plastic ones. Let's slide this one off. And this one too. There we are. It'll be easier if we just remove this guide to get the chain off. There we go. Now, these guides are in great shape. Look at that. Okay, we have a C right here. And Ford guys, let me know, are these stampings on the block something that comes from the factory? I don't know. All right, chain is off. The cylinder heads are now free to come off. We just have bolts. Let's see what's inside. Oh, it's not bad. Not bad at all. I wonder what they torque these two. They're aftermarket head bolts. And it looks like we can leave the camshafts on the heads and everything. Oh man, guys, in the next few minutes, we're gonna find out what happened to this engine, and then we're gonna flip my new one over and see if I got a good deal or not. So I actually didn't buy that engine myself. The previous owner of this Cobra did. So when I showed you guys this car last year, I mentioned this, but it was owned by a friend of mine. I since bought the Cobra from him, but he had sourced the engine a few months back. So Kevin, let's hope that engine you bought is a good one. These bolts say SPS on them. Definitely aftermarket. Okay, I'm gonna lose a little coolant here. That's okay. It's nothing the shop or my boots haven't seen before. Okay, that's a lot of coolant. Yeah, that's fun. Head coming off. Ooh, there's a valve. Ooh, there's a couple valves. Whoa, yes. Look at that. Oh man, that is sweet. Okay, that makes sense as to the angle that we were looking at before. All the valves looked fine. Well, that's because we couldn't see the bottom. Wow, dude. I mean, how many valves? Wow, this valve broke off so long ago, it's deteriorated as well. This is great. There's clay in here. This has turned to clay. Wow. Oh, this is good carnage, guys. Is there a, ooh, am I digging a hole in this piston? Oh yeah, well, shoot, I'm gonna get cut. It's like kind of sharp in there. Let's get rid of this head gasket, get out of here. Oh, there's so much stuff. Oh, yes. Oh, is there a, oh, I think, oh man, guys, we gotta get this coolant out of here. I think the cylinder is just completely destroyed. <laughs> These are little souvenirs though, look at that. Oh, what do we got guys? You guys get to look at this before I do. Let's see, oh yeah. 
One, two, three, four. Not bad. You know, it's got more valves than it doesn't, right? Wow. There's carnage and then there's ancient carnage. I mean, seriously, the valves are flaking away to nothing. Pretty cool. All right, let's get some of this coolant and stuff out of here. I want to see this cylinder. Oh wait, oh that's a, oh I was touching a, another valve. <laughs> okay, never mind. I thought there was like a hole on the side of the block down there or something, which there could be, but there's that. There's a lot of goo. I gotta say. You know what's funny? When I first got this Cobra last year, I was like super optimistic. It had been sitting for 20 years and I'm like, what if the rings are just slightly frozen into the cylinder? You know, and I did my normal legit street cars, old car rescue thing where I mixed penetrating oil and transmission fluid and stuck it in the cylinders and let it sit overnight. I'm like, maybe that'll fix it. <laughs> if only I knew. I did boroscope it back then. I just picked the wrong cylinder to boroscope. Otherwise I would have seen this right away. This is awesome. Yeah, the cylinder looks fine. I mean, I mean, it's not fine. Obviously it's completely destroyed, but it doesn't have a hole in it. Oh, this is cool guys. Now I will say this, these pistons look totally different than the pistons on my new engine. And we know this is a built engine for sure. All right, we are gonna get this other head off to see what other carnage is going on, but I can't wait anymore on the new one. Let's, uh, let's see what we got on the bottom end. Before we flip the engine around to remove the oil pan, let's see if there's any oil in it. No. All right, let's flip it over. This is such a big engine. Is it gonna clear? Okay, I got stuff. Okay, yeah, I gotta clean the shop anyway, right? At least it's green. Oh, oh, look at this, guys. I can't believe I didn't notice this right away. So this is an oil drain right here. And what I was told is that this had a single turbo feeding it. So at least that portion of it isn't a lie or a supercharger, but it had forced induction. You wanna consider that good or bad, I don't know, but supposedly 10,000 miles and there was nothing wrong with it. I'm getting nervous, guys. I love carnage, but not when it's an engine that I need. Can you imagine a $3,500 paperweight? I guess he found this on like Facebook Marketplace. It was like five hours away. You never know, man. Don't buy engines that way, all right? They definitely sealed it up pretty good. Wow, he's like a gallon of RTV. Crazy. Oh, man. This was never going to leak. <laughs> Whoo! Good job on the reseal, guys. Wow. When in doubt, bigger pry bar. Guys, I've never had an oil pan like this before. This is intense. Oh. 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 The suspense is already killing me, and this thing gets stuck for five minutes. Jeez. OK, at least be built. Ooh. Yes. Look at the hardware. ARP. Yes. We definitely have rods. Ooh, there's part numbers on the pistons too. Yes. I don't want to celebrate too early. We don't like know if it has any other issues, but it looked good. The cylinders look good. They had some carbon though. Uh, I, I don't know, 10,000 miles. Maybe it's more than that, but uh, it's nothing a little Italian tune-up can't handle. I mean, we are boosted too. We'll run some power through this thing and clean it right up. Woo! All right, let's run some part numbers. Yay! Here are the pistons we have in this engine. They are diamond pistons, about $900, and they are 20 over. And guys, check out the manly rods that we have. These are $1,900, but there's options you can choose. Someone put some serious money into this engine, and I'm not really sure right now, but I think the crank is aftermarket. Check this out. If you look at the counterweights here, they're kind of goldish, and that could be because it's a hardened crank. And that's a process it goes through and it turns that color. I'm pretty sure this is an aftermarket crank. This engine is probably good for at least a thousand wheel. And then they went with the ARP on the mains and on the rods. Oh, and speaking of rods, let's just pull a cap off and check out the bearings. I should just end today right now with this happiness, but I gotta take, I gotta see. I gotta see. Oh, all right. Let's see what we got, people. Oh, moment of truth. Come on, Rod Cap. Remove. Remove the yourself. Sometimes you just gotta give it a couple gentle taps with a mallet. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. We're looking pretty good. Now, it's hard to show this on camera because you might think this looks bad, but it is perfectly smooth. Like your nail doesn't catch in anything at all. So when bearings are brand new, they have a little coating on them that wears away but this is really, really nice. And your number one sign is just how absolutely perfect this crankshaft is. Look at that. If you guys don't remember what the rod bearings looked like on the Porsche, then here's what they looked like. And they were also flattened out like a pancake. 
This pops right out perfectly. And let's see. Oh, we got a date code. April 2008. Okay, so it's kind of an older build, I guess. Unless they just had these bearings sitting around forever. And they are standard, so they aren't over or undersized. And they snap in like butter. The oil, the remnants in here look absolutely perfect. I think we're good, guys. I don't know, I'm gonna knock on this rod cap because in the next video, we are going to be firing this engine up and really seeing what I've gotten myself into. And I don't know, right now I'm just on cloud nine. I have a good engine, people. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know I don't have good luck with this. I know it was a little hard to tell with the boroscope, but look at the cylinder walls. They look brand new. And I don't know anything about the cylinder heads, but they are blue and there is some stuff etched in here that I don't believe is factory. So they could have reworked these heads and it was running a turbo. So that's why it just has regular exhaust manifolds. They were probably just running with those. And does it have head studs? Good. All right, something we're already familiar with, the SPS head bolts. They're definitely aftermarket. We have something going on here, just left side, okay. 182.8 uh, intake, okay, cool. Are, are these different cams? I wonder if they're stamped. There is some writing on the top of the camshafts. Uh, I can't find any info on the internet, but this might've just been kind of an older build. It is possible that this has aftermarket cams. It would be really cool. Probably sound a little bit different than your standard Cobra 4.6 liter, but it's nice to see that we have the good bolts. Everything on the bottom end looks good. I am very, very happy. I'm gonna flip this back around though. Let's see what we got on this side. Last head bolt. More of a mess, whatever, whatever. All right, I had to loosen up this bracket. Too excited. There we go. What do we got? Oh, we got more, more good and I mean bad stuff. It's bad. Okay. Let's see, we're just missing one on this side, not too bad. And it looks like spiders or something we're living in here. Man, what happened? Did they just mess up the timing? More goo. Oh wow, that, that was the valve, guys. You see that? It literally is just breaking it off. It's like a mummy valve. You touch it and it just obliterates itself. Lots of goo though. All right, well, that's all she wrote, guys. And it's a shame because I think there was some work done to these heads, I'm almost sure. I mean, they could probably be fixed. I mean, there are definitely some good parts here, but I'm happy I'm going down the route of this engine because that thing probably cost a ton to build. And for us to send this out to a machine shop and wait like a year, like I've been waiting with my SVT Lightning, I'm not, I'm not down with that. Now, here's what I'm thinking. Considering that the Cobra was essentially turned into a race car, I mean, they swapped out the manual transmission for an automatic, the independent rear suspension for a solid axle, big blower, big horsepower, fastest Cobra ever. This thing was obviously raced a ton, and I wonder if they over revved it, and that is why the valves hit the pistons. It's possible the valve springs were weak as well, and it is also possible that it skipped timing, but either way, valves hitting pistons is never good and, and the pistons always win. All right, guys, that will do it for this video. I think we're in pretty good shape to get this thing to run in the next one. So we're gonna have the first start in over 20 years of our world's fastest Cobra from back in like the year 2000. I'm so excited. And then eventually we're gonna drive this car. It's gonna be like a blast from the past. This is a 17,000 mile car, it's so cool. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you guys like SVT content, there is a ton more to come and, and you know, the lightning. So share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I hope you guys had a fantastic new year and I will see all of you in the next video. Last year, I got this Cobra Mustang delivered to my shop. God, I'm so cold. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gotta do facial exercises in the cold. Ah, okay. So here's the game plan. Remove all sorts of stuff that, hold on, where am I? Oh, I'm going here, okay. So here's the game plan. Remove everything that needs, uh, this isn't the right size. Uh, so far, so. <coughs> now, if you guys remember on, if you guys remember on the, if you guys remember what the rod bearings looked like on the Porsche, if you guys don't remember what the rod bearings look like, the transmission, I'll show you how to, yeah. Hey guys, if you made it this far in the video, you are awesome. Thank you so much 
for watching and let me know in the comments by answering the secret question. Would you rather have a 99 or 01 SVT Cobra or an LS1 F body? Let me know down below. And if you wanna watch some more LSC videos, you can watch this one or this one or any other one you want.